Today, we're going to go through everything that you need to know to be able to carb load properly before a marathon. Carb loading has the potential to significantly improve your runtime during a marathon, so it's definitely worth doing. But it also has the potential to cause a lot of unpleasant symptoms like bloating, diarrhea, or abdominal cramps. But we're going to cover what to eat, what not to eat, how long before your race you should carb load for, and a load of other helpful tips for you to make sure that you you run your best marathon possible. If you're new here, then hey, my name is James and I'm a registered sports nutritionist and love to talk all things exercise and nutrition. All right, so carb loading. It's a favorite topic of mine because it's such a powerful tool, but it's not as straightforward as a lot of people think, and that's a good place to start. Let's talk about what proper carb loading isn't. It isn't just eating a big pasta meal the night before, nor is it just eating a bit more carbs the day before your race. And finally, it isn't going low carb first to then be able to carb load properly, and that's only in part because that's no fun. Instead, it's eating a large and specific amount of carbohydrates in a good time frame before your race, whilst avoiding or reducing certain food groups. Hmm. That sounds pretty boring and complicated, doesn't it? Well, don't worry, it's not that bad and I'll walk you through everything. I've also created a carb loading plan which you can download for free to help you out and we'll go through that later. As a very quick explanation as to why you want to carb load, it all comes down to energy reserves and what you need to fuel you through a marathon. Your body has two main sources of energy, fats and carbohydrates. Fats are essentially unlimited when it comes to energy because the average person has over 50,000 calories worth of energy stored as fat. But carbohydrates are limited and the average person only has about 2,500 calories worth of carbs stored in the body as glycogen. When you run a marathon, a large proportion of energy is going to come from carbohydrates. So this plus the fact that carbs can run out means carbs have to be the focus before and during your marathon. By carbohydrate loading, you maximize or even go above the usual storage amount of glycogen, which is extremely helpful for you because it reduces the chances of you bonking or hitting the wall. And that's the term used to describe getting to a critically low level of glycogen in your muscles, meaning you have to reduce your pace and you'll probably feel dreadful. Carb loading has been shown to improve endurance performance by about two to 3%. Now that might not sound like much, but these are the time differences that it could make for you, which is actually pretty significant. The first and big thing to talk about is just how much you need to eat to carb load properly. The guidance is to eat about 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day, which is actually quite a lot. So let's say you're 70 kilos, that's 700 grams of carbohydrates. This is the amount of carbs in different foods to give you a bit of perspective on this. And for a lot of people, the amount of carbs they have to eat is quite a surprise. If you just include the amount of carbs here, that's 2,800 calories, so 700 grams times four, and then you've still got to include protein and fat too. This is why having a plan in place is so useful, because if most people simply just up their carb intake a bit compared to normal, eat a bit more rice or pasta, they won't get anywhere near this 10 grams per kilo mark. So now you know how much you need to eat, let's talk about what sort of carbs you should eat because this can have a significant impact on how well the carb loading goes and whether you get any sort of gastrointestinal upset during your marathon. For everyday healthy nutrition, I would normally suggest that you eat whole grain carbohydrate varieties in most instances, because overall the nutrient profile is healthier and it's better for you. But when it comes to carb loading, this isn't the case. With carb loading, generally the simpler the carb, the better. So this is one of those times to absolutely go for white bread over wholemeal bread, white rice over brown rice, and to make sure you include some sweets and sugary drinks in your food. The whole grain varieties contain more fiber, more protein, and more fat. And you don't want any of those things in any large amount when you're carb loading. Your focus is carbs, and those other nutrients are just going to make you feel more full, bloated, and there's a higher likelihood that they will still be around your gastro tract on the day of your marathon, meaning they could contribute to an upset tummy come race day. Sweets and carbohydrate-based drinks are an easy way of consuming simple carbohydrates with minimal protein, fat, and fiber in them, so they work perfectly as part of a carb loading plan. So stock up on your favorites 
and get them down you. Next up on your list of things to tackle is how long to carb load for and whether you should do a low carb period first. So the current evidence suggests that even 24 hours of proper carb loading is probably sufficient to maximize glycogen stores before something like a marathon. A study compared muscle glycogen stores after 24 and 72 hours of carb loading and found no significant difference in the measurements. Now, my personal opinion on this is that it's probably worth starting something like 36 to 48 hours out and certainly as a minimum time frame of transitioning to lower fiber foods. I feel like it's sensible to have a bit of extra leeway there and if you have a busy life or job or you're doing a little run out then it just makes sure that you're going to be as well topped up as possible. You also don't need to go on a low carb diet before doing a carb load. We know that you can get the same results from being on a standard diet and going straight into a carb loading diet in terms of glycogen storage. And if you do end up going on a low carb diet first then you'll probably just end up feeling miserable and rubbish and that in itself is definitely not great marathon prep so don't do that now when you're carb loading you need to keep an eye on your hydration too from my own personal experience and from working with athletes it's really common to feel more thirsty than usual when you're carb loading so keep hydration in mind and plan to drink a little bit more than usual i usually add an electrolyte tablet or just a bit of normal table salt to my drinks over the days when i'm carb loading unless you have a specific medical condition and you've been advised not to do this this shouldn't be an issue especially over the short term because any excess salt should just be peed out now i can't actually find any evidence to support this but I wonder if this is simply to do with the way that carbs are stored in the body. Carbs are stored as glycogen, and for every one gram of glycogen you store, you store three grams of water. I wonder if because you're suddenly having a much higher carb amount than usual, your body is going to have to use water from your blood plasma, and hence, relatively, you become dehydrated and you feel thirsty. But bottom line, keep up with your fluids whilst you carb load. Now, you may have been listening to all of this and thinking, this is a heck of a lot of carbs and you're saying to eat less protein, fat, fiber and wholemeal carbs. Is this really healthy? Well, there's not really anything unhealthy about it as such. We're talking about a short max two to three day period of a higher carb intake than usual. Your body should be able to handle this without any real problem unless you already have a diagnosis like diabetes. And because it is so short, we're not really worried about vitamin or mineral deficiencies either. Plus, if you've been training for a marathon, then it's likely you've done a fair amount of exercise. And we know exercise in its various forms makes the body better able to handle carbohydrates, so really there shouldn't be much issue here. So now let's go over some extra tips for carb loading, which I think make a world of difference. The first one is to eat less over the course of the day. By this, I mean eat more in the morning and afternoon so that you can eat relatively less in the evening. If you've ever eaten a load of food before bed, then you'll know that uncomfortable sensation that can happen when you're just too full to sleep. You lie there tossing and turning and may even get the sweats too. Pizza or pasta sweats, anyone? So my suggestion is to just taper what you eat over the day so that you can feel better in the evening and hopefully get a good night's sleep. My second big tip is to make sure you include carby drinks in your plan. If you consume carbs just as whole foods, then it can feel way too much. So liquids are an easy way of adding carbs to your day. Sports drinks are great for this purpose because they're usually full of simple sugars as well as a bit of sodium or salt, which will help with your hydration too. Third on my tip list is to practice in advance. Don't just plan to do it a couple of days out from your race and throw caution to the wind. My advice would be to practice once or twice at least two to four weeks out from your race. Even if you just try it for one day, make sure that you feel comfortable doing it and you can tolerate all the foods that you've picked. If not, you've got time to change things around and fine tune it for you so that come race day, it's no stress. And last but not least, use a carb loading plan. Because of pretty much everything I've mentioned in this video, having a carb loading plan is the best way to carb load properly. I've created one which you can download for free and I've put the link in the description of this video for you. I've used it before with success for many a race and it will help to give you an idea of what you might want to eat. You can change food to suit your own preferences so that it's perfect for you. Now, as well as carb loading before the race, you need to consider your breakfast and how to actually fuel the marathon itself. I'm going to be doing videos on this and once I have, 
I will put them up next to me here. But for now, make sure that you press subscribe and the notification icon to stay up to date with things. If you can't see anything about Marathon Breakfast or Fueling for One, then you should find some other useful videos for you to watch. So enjoy your training and have an awesome marathon.